Welcome to the channel everyone, I'm Scratch, this is another Dragon Air Silent Gods video, hope you guys are having a fantastic, fantastic day. Today guys, we're actually gonna have a look at the new type of damage dealers for the Necrosis element, which is being released in Season 3, and yes, I am talking about the Shadow, which by the way was desperately, desperately needed for this elemental affinity. This video is sponsored by Dragon Air Silent Gods, so I just wanna say a big thank you to them for sponsoring today's video. If you guys are new to the channel, you might be looking into trying out Dragoner Silent Gods, or uh, you're just curious to find out more things about Dragoner, you can download the game by using my link in the description down below, or in the pinned comment, or by scanning the QR code you see on the screen. Plus, like this, you get to help and support the channel as well, which I really, really appreciate. But diving straight into today's main topic, guys. Season 3, Echoes of the Deep is almost here, promising richer rewards and richer events for the hardcore players and we only have a couple of uh, days to wait for the release of the of the new season of course we have a brand new elemental affinity fire and radiance lightning and necrosis uh, uh ice and uh, poison which will be only in season three then of course we have a brand new sandbox we have new bosses tons of new things happening in uh, in dragoner guys but on top of it we have over 30 new heroes joining us in Dragoner Silent Gods for Season 3. This one right here, Aladia, will be the guaranteed event, guys, that everybody can take part in and participate. I would strongly suggest you save your Heliolite, because she is absolutely amazing. Then we have the very first couple, Theodamer and Finja, joining in Dragoner. These are probably my most wanted heroes, so expect to see a guide on them most probably tomorrow. They are, wow, amazing. But in today's video, guys, I want to uh, spotlight the new damage dealers for the Necrosis. How I mentioned, the Shadows. Now, they are uh, three new legendaries and three new epics, if I'm not mistaken. And I might, I might find a new rare in here as well. Uh, I think, yes, we do have a new rare right here, which is uh, Seafly. I forgot to level her up. But keep in mind that we have a rare as well. So... We have uh, Aspelta, which, by the way, she's super awesome. Then we have Daphne. Uh, we have Ozul, which is the exclusive legendary. We have Tatot. We have uh, Cheater. And we have Teldi, which is uh, a voracious twin brother. This is a different uh, new hero, but it's a support one. And this was added either to the Pillar of Trials, either to the Fey Man that I can't really remember 100%. And how I mentioned the new rare right here. Now we're going to see what these new heroes can do. I'll be very honest with you guys. I don't personally think that they are completely busted for the Vortex or anything like that. I think they're doing a decent job. Uh, comparing them with the Season 2 additions, right? We had Burn, we had Ice Blast, and we had Thunderbolt. I would probably uh, place them as the equivalent of the Burn. You know, like the Corrosion is the equivalent of the Ice Blast this season. and uh, Aura is the equivalent of Thunderbolt. But I feel like Shadow in general is a bit better than Burn, uh, just because they're more effective for uh, more content. And they work in a very unique way. So let me just quickly explain you. Uh, dealing damage grants Shadow energy. So the more damage you're dealing, the more uh, Shadow energy you're gaining. These new heroes for the Shadow... Uh, the Shadow damage dealer, sorry. They don't have their... Uh, ultimate energy bar as the regular ones they will only have the shadow energy so when that gets filled up to 100 that's when they're able to open uh, their ultimate skill you know in the meantime they are not able to do it now a few reasons why i think that they're very effective and why i think they will be very powerful for arena to be more specific is because they can gain this ultimate energy much faster than your regular heroes which might give them the upper hand to attack faster to make to take an action faster. Now, it might not be uh, extremely game-changing in some of the, the scenarios because you're not bringing crowd control or anything like that. But if you, I, if you are able to drop in a lot of damage on them and kill the enemy before he gets to move, it's game-changing for, uh, for you. So we have uh, uh, Aspalta right here. Uh, attack aura in all battles. Dealing damage grants shadow energy when the hero has enough shadow energy, they can cast their ultimate skill. As the battle starts, grants 100 stacks of Heart of Hate to all shadow allies. And you lose a, a stack every one second. So basically it increases your 
uh, your damage by 50%. The battle skill, which is very, very powerful, throws a shadow blade at a target, dealing a necrotic damage to them uh, and to the enemies within a target center range in the meantime. Gain stun shadow energy for each enemy hit. The more enemies you hit, the more additional uh, shadow energy you're gaining, allowing you to move into your ultimate faster. This makes it pretty good for the goblin as well. Then, gains an additional 200% shadow energy when casting this skill in the battle for the very first time. And this is on an initial recharge time of 5 seconds. The more skill haste you have, the faster you're going to unlock the 200% shadow energy and move over to your ultimate skill. Now, with the ultimate skill, not only that you're going to get to deal damage, but you're going to grant 20 shadow energy to all of the shadow allies, which will allow them to charge their ultimate much, much faster, right? And then you strike the enemy, deal damage, and you ignore 50% of the target's defense. So I think that she's very, very interesting. I'm going to read you the skills on the three, the three legendaries, guys, because we're going to use them in a, in a few fights. I just want to show you how powerful the necrosis element is became now and i'm i'm glad that they finally uh, got some nice treatment because we desperately needed some uh, stronger uh, stronger heroes in here we still need some more support for them so hopefully uh, they will be adding some more in the in the next season attack aura in dungeons so this one is a bit wonky the, the hero because she's not really targeting all the time uh, the right champion to to get the job done but is the same story. When she has the ultimate energy, she can cast the ultimate skill. The hero gains an additional 20% shadow energy. Also, if the hero possesses a target, when gaining shadow energy, the possessed target will gain the same amount of shadow energy. The battle skill randomly attacks up to three enemies, and you gain 10 shadow energy for each hit. So, this is actually very effective too, because you're going to get to charge your ultimate much faster. Now, here, you're going to possess an ally for 15 seconds, during which time the possessed target deals necrotic damage to nearby enemies every one second. On top of it, the target, the possessed target, will gain 35% of her attack, and uh, when the possessed target deals damage, 8% of the damage will be converted into HP, so they can recover. Now, once the ultimate energy runs out, of course, uh, you're going to uh, swap the form, uh, the form as well. Then we have the exclusive, you have attack aura for arena only. And uh, again, he's going to activate his ultimate energy when he has enough uh, uh, shadow energy. The hero permanently gains a stack of undispellable host imprint, which of course will increase the crit damage and the defense penetration, which means you're going to ignore more defense. Then the battle skill fires an orbs, deals damage, and uh, you gain 20 shadow energy. The ultimate will transform him into a demon in the designated location. So he's going to start to smack left and right, guys. He's going to be pretty, pretty funky. The epics are pretty interesting as well. Uh, this one is actually pretty good. He's going to gain ultimate energy whenever enemies die. Then uh, we have Cheetah, which I don't really remember exactly what he, uh, what he does. Uh, he deals 4% max uh, HP, whenever the hero skill deals damage to, to enemies, okay. So this is probably the most underwhelming out of all of them. He's pretty good as well because uh, when gaining shadow energy grants 30% of the obtained energy to another ally. So he's basically going to help the rest of the team to get their ultimates much, much faster. We're going to run this in the dummy first, guys. Then we're going to head over to the temporal vortex just for a quick test so you guys get a better idea of what you can expect from them and then we're gonna go over in the arena where i do think that uh, they belong really so we're gonna use the attack aura that's fine and check this out so look at their energy you see they have this shadow energy rather than the regular ultimate energy like the other heroes bang we already charged it and we are ready to to rumble so right here we basically possessed a different uh, a different hero now she possessed the the hero that was about to transform too, so that was a that was almost a, a bit of a, a bit of a waste. I'm not sure what happens in that case actually, because my uh, my hero transformed into the into the monster, right? But she possessed the same hero at, uh, right a second before that. So I'm very curious what exactly happens in that case, you know.
So check out the damage. You have Ozzel right there with 55%, while the rest of them are barely doing any damage compared to him, right? Like he is doing crazy, crazy damage. He does have the exclusive artifact on as well. Just so you understand kind of like what happens too, but I feel like the damage is pretty, is pretty nasty. So that's how they're basically working. They have the shadow energy, you see, and right now uh, we basically just uh, possessed the monster that we have summoned right there. And uh, I'm actually going to, to manual it once and uh, put uh, the possession on Zarlot, for example, and see what, uh, what happens in that case. But there we go. She came back. It doesn't seem to change form, shift forms when she's possessing an, uh, an ally. But the ally will deal a specific amount of damage and will gain the, the attack. So we are ready to possess a different target. So let's go on Zarlot, for example. Okay. So you see things slowly start to change, but it seems that we are using both of the skills anyway. So we are using our initial skills and we're gaining the additional stuff that comes with a possession from the ally, which is actually very, uh, very interesting because I, I haven't really paid uh, that much attention to see what's, uh, what's happening if uh, we are possessing uh, an ally, you know? So let's go again. Anyway, the exclusive legendary seems to be doing an insane amount of damage. He's, he seems to be pretty, pretty solid. Like, check that out. 55.2%. While we have uh, Daffy with 13.5. Uh, and uh, I forgot her name right now, but she's at 15.9. Uh, Either way, let's head over to Arena. And then we're going to do a Vortex uh, run. Actually, I am at Arena. Uh, it's going to be a bit harder to... To find uh, opponents in here, I would assume that have a have a decent team. So let's see. Do we have gear on them? No, you don't. Okay, so we're gonna have to try and uh, refresh a bit. I don't think I'm gonna find any in here, but if not, I'm gonna go to three man arena. I was just curious to see if I find anyone here. So three man arena, it is. At least there, I know that somebody put put a put a defense. So this one right here is a is an option. Uh, they do have gear on, how you may probably notice. And we are going against the new couple, guys. Now, I only set one team for Arena because I'm trying Necrosis right now. But just check out Aspelta, that's her name, how quickly she's going to be on top of the situation. Just pay attention to, to this. Uh, the rest have no gear from the other two teams, just literally my very first team. But check this out. So I'm going to put it on one X speed so you guys can see. There we go. We already jumped on one of the the enemy, and we're using the ultimate way before they even get to move, right? So because of it, we already annihilated one of their uh, support uh, support heroes in there. Right here, I'm transforming into the into the monster, killed another one. The other one has invincibility, so it's a bit harder to to take take care of him, but that's fine. We're gonna we're gonna deal enough damage to to wipe them all off. Corrosion, I don't think is. Uh, very impactful uh, in general for uh, for arena though but either way uh, the shadow i feel like it belongs uh, it belongs in arena i feel like they're just uh, they're they're pretty pretty good you know so right here is no point to do it because i have no gear on uh, on the other heroes i just randomly threw them in there just to be able to to test the first team but i feel like they're definitely very very uh, effective so let's see does he have gear on no, okay, so we're not going to be able to fight him. What about... No, no gear there. So we do have one that has, uh, that has gear, and uh, that's about it. Is the test server, guys? Uh, I don't know if I mentioned it at the beginning or no. Uh, season 3 is not live in-game just yet. That's something that I mentioned 100%. But on the test server, these are a lot of uh, enemies that don't have gear on their characters. So unfortunately, you were only able to see one fight, but at least you got the idea. Recharging that ultimate energy fast really gives them a, uh, an advantage over the, the rest, you know? So if we're going to head over to the Vortex, I haven't really uh, prioritized to build the WoW team for the Vortex. I literally just kind of like threw them in there. I only have difficulty 3 available at the moment. Uh, so let me just quickly explain you. So we have Quesitia for attack down. She's going to get the, the job done with uh, that. We have her on a puppeteer set, which will give additional defense to my entire team. Uh, she has the Witch's Remains. Then, of course, we have Ozel right here. We have uh, Aspelta. 
they're built on the aerial ruler set, which basically uh, gives you additional attack the more crit damage you, you have, you know. A Zarlot is going to provide a bit of healing and more damage. And then we have uh, Daphne right here. I, I have no preset or anything like that. I'm not trying to do like hundreds of millions of damage. I'm just trying to show you how uh, the team will uh, uh, perform, how they're actually working, you know. So uh, to keep that in mind. The problem with the Necrosis before with the Summoners was that bringing in the Summoners was just absolutely painful okay they were dying very quick as uh as uh, targets in general and that was not uh not very helpful you know the summoners and if you were missing one of the key champions from the necrosis uh you weren't gonna get much out of them especially in the vortex or generally in uh, any boss fights you know so uh right now with them at least you have a good reliable source of uh of damage compared to the old summoners but again, of course, it will be required to have specific uh, heroes and stuff. But I do think that uh, they are uh, pretty, pretty solid uh, like this, you know. I like the whole idea of uh, ultimate energy. I just realized that she might have more HP than, uh, than my tank for whatever reason. So we're probably going to uh, lose Aspalta uh, faster than the rest. I haven't really paid attention at how much HP she actually had. Probably she has a bit too much, and that's why she's not the, the main target, you know. And since she's a melee hero, uh, she will have a higher base stats as well. At least higher HP compared to the, to the rest of them. But yeah, Ozel is definitely doing a lot of damage compared to, to, the, to the rest, you know. I do have to say that the exclusive helps him, uh, helps him a lot as, a, as an artifact, and probably the majority of us that will get to summon him if we will summon him, uh, won't have the exclusive too. It's pretty hard to get dupes of the of the same uh, legendary, but the same exclusive even harder. You know, I do like them though. I feel like they're definitely a good uh, a good addition. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Are you a fan so far of uh, Shadow? You prefer Corrosis more, or you prefer Aura? Aura feels uh, feels pretty underwhelming for the moment. I'm not sure how uh, effective will be against the world bosses. But as it stands right now, uh, Aura is not as uh, as useful, you know. The damage is a bit underwhelming. But then keep in mind, Radiance has uh, has the rally heroes, which are like mind blowing when we're talking about damage, you know. Another video that uh, you should be seeing on today is uh, 500 summons on the new season three banner. What can we get from 500 summons? So definitely. Keep an eye for that video after you're watching this because uh, it should be live by uh, by the time you're done with uh, with this video, you know. So look at that. We already have 17 million damage. Once we're going to lose one uh, one hero, guys, that's when I'm going to to stop the the fight, you know. But for the moment, Aspelta she's still taking the the single hit uh, uh, hits. If I would bring in one of the epics, you know, like. It can be more helpful in some uh, in some situations. Uh, one will help with the recharge of the shadow energy. One will help with uh, different things, you know. And uh, it's nice to see that we do have options, uh, and we have three options for uh, for the epics, you know. Definitely pretty good to to see that we have that. Twenty seven million damage, and we have of course Azul with fifteen million, fifty eight percent. Then we have Daphne with. 3.6 uh, 3 million, 13.6. And we have As uh, Aspalta with 4.3 million. Now, I do think she's better for Arena just because she can quickly jump in action, uh, kill somebody before they get to, to move. And that is very, very helpful for, uh, for Arena. I think they will be very, uh, very powerful for, uh, for Arena. One more thing that I quickly want to show you guys is a run in the in the goblin i haven't done one yet to see how they're performing in there but i do think that it will be pretty pretty nice you know especially if i'm bringing in the epic uh the epic hero so let me just quickly do that and we're gonna bring in this epic uh, he will gain ultimate energy whenever the enemies uh, die shadow energy rather than ultimate energy so let's see how they will perform in the in the vortex i would assume they will uh, play it a bit uh, a bit better now ozel he's a single target right 
he's not going to do a lot of uh, AoE damage or anything like, uh, like that. But look at, at the Aspalta dealing the, the damage. She's quickly wiping them. Okay, so you can actually see who's possessed. Now is a better visual right here because you can see the, the aura going around, the, uh, around our ally, the one that is getting uh, possessed by Daphne. Okay, that's, that's good because I was, uh, I was thinking for a second, like, there's no way they haven't, uh, they haven't done anything to, to show that, you know, like. But yeah, As Aspalta, she's going to be nice for uh, Arena, even though she's a melee and she's not a range. I think she's going to be pretty nice. But we smashed it. 43 seconds. Jesus, this is faster than my uh, Frost team that I had with Vitar and other, uh, other OP legendaries last season. So this is actually very, very promising. And in terms of damage, check this out. The epic 19%, uh, 26 from Aspalta, and we have 26 from uh, Ozel, 12% from Daphne. Now, Ozel, I'm pretty convinced that he's not going to be great in here. Uh, same with... Uh, same with Daphne, you know, I feel like they could be replaced by uh, the other two epics. But let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Are you a fan of the Shadow so far? Are you looking forward to play around with some, uh, some new toys? Thanks again to Dragonair for sponsoring this video. And don't forget, guys, if you want to get involved and you want to try Dragonair Silent Gods, come and join me. You can download the game by using my link in the description down below or in the pinned comment or by scanning the QR code you see on the screen. That was all for this video and make sure you keep an eye open for the next video dropping in the next few minutes. Peace.